Hey, thank you for joining us today in our study of the Christian walk. And uh, today we're going to talk about walking in the spirit or walking by the spirit. I'm going to touch the hem of the garment a little bit and touch, talk about the Holy Spirit some. We'll give you all the answers I know that you'd like to have. I don't have all the answers that I'd like to have. So well, I'm just going to kind of touch on that and deal with a passage of scripture that I know has been taught here at Central a number of times through the years. Um, so we're just going to touch on some of it, see if we can't get a better understanding of what it means to walk by the Spirit or walk in the Spirit. So let's begin with a prayer and then we'll get into our text. Father, thank you for allowing us to have your word that gives us direction, that helps us to know the path that we should walk on and the path that we should avoid. Lord, we pray that you will stand beside us and help us as we daily make those decisions as to which path we'll follow. Give us courage, give us comfort, and give us hope, we would pray. Thank you so much for Jesus and for what he's done and how you have provided a way for us to be forgiven of our sins, a way for us to have an opening into the heavenly realm itself when this life is over. God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for its direction and its guidance and the hope it gives us. And we pray that you'll open our eyes and help us to see the wondrous things you have in store for us in your word today. In the name of Jesus, we pray and amen. All right, I wanna take us to a passage of scripture that you may be familiar with, and that's in Galatians chapter five. Galatians chapter five, we'll begin reading at verse 16. It says, I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambition, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revel revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in the past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Verse 22, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another and envying one another. All right, it's a long passage, but it deals with a, a lot of things that tell us about how we live our life. The first thing that we need to understand and recognize is what he mentioned up at verse 17. And that, that is that there's always a battle that's going on. Every one of us has this battle between following the ways of God or the, the path or the walk in the spirit or to follow the ways of this world to fulfill the lust of the flesh. And, and we all face these battles. We all face these challenges day by day. In fact, I, I'm a little troubled and I, I sometimes hear Christians intimate that, that well, they, they've reached a level that they're above that. They don't, they don't sin anymore. They don't have any challenges like that anymore. They don't face these struggles. Well, I will tell you what, it, I've certainly not reached that, that plateau. I don't believe anybody has. Sometimes we just become blind to our own faults, and sometimes it's just our own desire to want to be better than we are. We all face a challenge. There is, there is daily this struggle between right and wrong, between the, the spirit and the flesh that resides within each one of us, that, that we have to face these challenges. 
And what Paul says is they are contrary to one another. They're at war against one another. There, there is a constant battle and fighting between the flesh and the spirit. It's ongoing. It's here as long as we're here. And we face those challenges day by day. To walk by the spirit, Paul says, one does not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And then he lists several of those that we'll look at in a little bit. And if one walks by the, the spirit, he's not going to fulfill those things. He's going to actually live by the, the fruit of the spirit and the things that he mentions in verses 22 and 23. But just to confirm this idea of this constant battle that's raging, I want you to look at a passage with me in, in Romans chapter 7. This is the Apostle Paul now. He's the author of the great majority of the New Testament. He is an apostle. He, he stands, in fact, we, we tend to hold him head and shoulders above us so many times because of just the work output that he did and his willingness to, to go through what he suffered and, and all that he endured. I want you to listen to what he says of himself in Romans chapter 7, beginning at verse 13. He says, has then what is good become death to me? Certainly not. But sin, that it might appear sin, was producing death in me through what is good. So that sin through the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I will to do, that I do not practice. But what I hate, that I do. If then I do what I will not to do, I agree with the law that it's good. But now it's no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, Paul says, nothing good dwells. For to will is present with me, but how to perform what is good, I do not find. For the good that I will or want to do, I do not do. But the evil that I want not to do, that I practice. Now, if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. I find then, verse 21, a law that evil is present with me, the one who wants to do good. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. O oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Paul says, I struggle. I want to do the right thing, and I end up doing the wrong thing. And I want to avoid the wrong thing, and I end up doing the wrong thing. And, and, and I have a mind, I have a desire, I have the will and the want to do what God wants me to do. But I struggle with it because sometimes I do the very thing that I don't want to do. In fact, I sometimes do the very thing I hate to do. Paul says that's the struggle that's going on between the flesh and the spirit. And the more we recognize and realize the truthfulness of that in our daily life, the better off we'll be. If we're just ignorant of the fact that, oh no, I've got this all taken care of. I've got it all down. I've been a Christian for five or 10 or 50 years or whatever. And so I don't struggle with that. I don't have that problem. I don't deal with that. Well, let me tell you, you need to wake up because you do struggle day by day. Maybe you're not fighting the battle, but there is a battle. There is constantly a war raging to walk by the spirit or to walk by the flesh, to fulfill the lust of the flesh or to fulfill the desires of God. Every single one of us has that battle. You know, we, we've seen it depicted in cartoons, right? 
You've seen the little angel that sits on one shoulder and the devil that sits on the other shoulder. One whispers in the ear what to do, the right thing. The other one whispers in the do ear, the, the other ear, what not to, you know, what to do, the wrong thing. And, and we're just uh, kind of facing with this. That's, in, that's real life. That's real struggles. Do I follow the lust of the flesh? Do I follow the, the desires of God? Do I walk by the spirit? Do I walk by the flesh? What, what do we do? Paul's encouragement here is walk by the Spirit, and he tells them how to do it. Now, there's been a great debate that has raged for centuries, and that is how do we do that? How do we walk by the Spirit? Um, do we have in some way when we become a Christian some miraculous leading of the Holy Spirit that guides us and, and directs us along the way? Um, or do we just have the Holy Spirit inspired word that we follow and by that we walk in the Spirit? Um, I, I, this is where I say I, I don't have the answers on, on a lot of this. I have a lot of questions I'd like to have answers for, but I personally don't, I don't know all the answers to that. I believe that the Bible is the inspired word of God given by the Spirit. And as I follow the Bible, I can walk by the ways of the Spirit because He's revealed it. The Holy Spirit has revealed that. I don't believe the Holy Spirit leads me or directs me in any miraculous way just because I'm a Christian. If so, He's not done a very good job because I've sure messed up enough times. So, so it's not that. It's a still a personal desire that I have or you have to live by the Spirit of God or to live by the lust of the flesh, like Paul said. And we all, are, we all have this conflict day by day as to which way we're going to follow, which one or which course that we will follow. Um, so let's look at this just a little bit and see what he does tell us. We do know that if we're going to, to walk by the Spirit, he said, we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And then he lists off what these different ones are. I'm reading out of the New King James now, and he says adultery, first of all. Now, that's not included in some of the earliest manuscripts, but the next word is fornication. Fornication is a very broad word that is uh, it's translated in some actual translations as just sexual immorality. It would include adultery. It would include uh, premarital sex, it would include pornography, it would include homosexuality. It's very, very broad term in referencing what is sexually immoral. The third word that he uses is uncleanness, which is uh, sometimes translated impurity, and it's that which is, is uh, morally soiled or, or dirty or unclean. It's an immoral sense. The next one is lewdness or lasciviousness, as some versions translate that. That's a hardly used word, certainly lascivious. We hardly ever hear that word, except maybe in a Bible class of somebody reading an older version. But lewdness we might get and hear occasionally. It's, it's blatant sin. It's, it, it's sin without any regard for common decency. It's just things that are done openly, blatantly in front of others. Idolatry is the fifth word, is that's putting something or someone, anything or anyone, above God. Sorcery is the sixth word, or witchcraft. It's the use of, of in, incantations and amulets and potions of magic that uh, different ones would use. Sorcery is wrong. Uh, hatred, number seven, is uh, enmity in some. It's the exact opposite of love is what he's talking about here. The eighth one he mentions is contentions or strife. That's, that is the, the outcome of having hatred leads to strife. And so these are works of the flesh that, that are quarreling and so on. The ninth word is jealousy or jealousies, a strong desire for uh, those things that would be wrong, a strong desire for uh, something that somebody else has and, and that jealousy that occurs. Uh, number 10 is the outburst of wrath. That is the, the blaze of hot temper. An outburst of wrath is, is not the slow building kind of anger, but it's somebody just flies off the handle immediately. There's an outburst of wrath. 
Selfish ambitions is the next one. That's that individual or partisan rivalry that sometimes occurs. All of these are works of the flesh. If we're going to walk in the spirit, we put all this away. Dissensions is the 12th one. That, that literally is a standing apart from one. So it's causing a division where fellowship is now cut off between uh, one or more or a group that may come as a result. Um, heresies is the 13th one, and that's this idea of having a, a party spirit. Uh, a heresy is a party spirit that causes a breakup, um, possibly in a church setting, as he might refer to it. Envy is the result or the outcome of jealousy. Murder, obviously, uh, as is used, would be referencing that which is taking a life unlawfully. It does not appear in some of the earliest manuscripts. Drunkenness is to come under the influence of any kind of alcohol or drug or something that would lessen my understanding. And final word is revelry or debauchery. It is the result that often it comes uh, from an excess use of alcohol. Now, just I just ran through those very quickly, but all of those things, he says, are works of the flesh. And if we're going to walk by the Spirit, walk in the Spirit, he says, we won't do those things. We won't fulfill those things. Now, in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, uh, there's a passage that talks about Christians. It doesn't say that, that you've never, ever done any of these things, but they don't live by this way because he says, such were some of you, but you were washed, you were sanctified, and you were justified there in 1 Corinthians 6. But this is the idea of, of making it a pattern of life. That we don't walk in those ways. It's a, it's a present, active, indicative verb uh, form that is used here of walk. So we, we, we don't continue to walk in the ways of uncleanness and lewdness and idolatry and sorcery and heresies. We don't continue to live. doesn't mean that a, a, a Christian never ever has any problems with these things. But he doesn't walk in that path. He doesn't continue down that road because now he is living by a different standard. He's going to walk by the Spirit. And so his life would fulfill the, the fruit of the Spirit. Now, fruit is singular, and it seems like all of these things that he lists, these nine different items, are really one. This is the character of the person who walks by the Spirit. Now, he, he puts on love, which is the, the Greek form here of agape or Christian love. It's an active goodwill that is based on the giver, not on the receiver. So a person not, might not be deserving of love, but to show an active good interest and, and kindness and goodness to them. The second word is joy, which is happiness or gladness that we should possess as Christians and walk with that having a peace or a tranquility and a serenity about us. To, it's the idea of having a quiet mind. And, and so as a Christian walking by the Spirit, this will be the fruit of our life. This is who we are. And the fourth one is long-suffering. It's the Greek word makrothemia, which is a, an excessive patience, an overmuch patience, that a person is long-suffering. And a Christian should walk in that way. Kindness is a calmness of temper and having a pleasant disposition about oneself. That should be a fruit of who we are. Goodness is actually taking the previous kindness and putting it into action. Now, you see, we, we have this pleasant disposition, so we're going to do for others, do good for others. And faithfulness is that confident trust and and a willingness to absolutely surrender to the authority of God. And gentleness is meekness and having a, a soothing quality about our lives, a certain humility that should be present. And the last one is self-control. It's a, it's a victory over desire, having the ability to, to keep ourselves and our passions within the realm of God. Now that, that was exceedingly fast to run through those. But it is to show us how we walk by the Spirit. This should be the very fruit of our life. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, 
faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That ought to be who we are, who you are. So um, as we talk about this and we think about it, look at the last couple of verses again in, in Galatians where we were. In Galatians chapter 5, we get back there. And uh, once you look at verses 24 through 26, where he concludes this section by his, and he says, and those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. You see, when we come to Christ, we die to our old self. The whole picture of baptism is that beautiful picture of of dying to ourself and being buried. He says here that we crucify, we, we kill those, those things of our old life. We kill the passions and the desires of our old life. And in verse 25, and if we live in the spirit, let us walk in the spirit, let us not become, now verse 26, don't become conceited, provoking one another or envying one another. You see, we to walk by the Spirit, we're going to try to put all of those evil passions and desires away and, and all of that conceit that maybe we had, that empty glory about ourselves and not to provoke and envy one another. Um, this, is the, this is the mind that we should have and this should be the fruit of our life to walk by the Spirit or walk in the Spirit. Again, the passage where we were in Romans chapter 5, uh, um, chapter 8, a little bit ago, verse 5, talks about putting on the mind of the Spirit. So what we should do now is, is think about what does the Spirit want me to do and how does He want me to live? That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn to His Word. I'm going to look for direction. I'm going to look for answers. And that's going to be my desire and my purpose to try to follow that. So that's how we walk by the Spirit. That's how we walk in the spirit, as long as we do that, we're no longer we're not under the law anymore, as those Jews were before, and we also have the beautiful uh, promise of the inheritance that is waiting for us in heaven. Galatians chapter five and verse twenty one and twenty three. And then I, I just want you to see. I, I read it, but it slips right by sometimes. And this is a verse, Romans chapter eight and verse one, that I'll leave you with this. And it says, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. What a great, great encouragement that is. That as we make up our mind to try to live by the Spirit, to try to walk by the Spirit of Jesus Christ, that there is now, therefore, now no condemnation to those who are doing so. Again, it doesn't mean that the Christian never sins, never trips, never stumbles, never fails. But we're, we're making that our purpose, our goal, our direction in life as we are trying to walk by the Spirit of God. And as we do that with our, our continual reliance upon Jesus Christ, he says, there's therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Let that give you hope. Let that give you encouragement this week as you think about these things. And as I say, next week, we'll come back together. We'll join up for the final lesson. And it's going to be from the scriptures of how not to walk as the Bible tells us. So thanks for joining us today again.